Hi guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to my channel, Taylor here. So on today's Let's Go To video, I figured we could go across the world to one of my favorite places that I've ever gone to, Rome. It's stunning, it's gorgeous, it's absolutely one of the greatest places I've ever gone. I loved every second of it. It was one of those just awe-inspiring, amazing trips to take and places to go to ever and it's definitely somewhere that everyone needs to go and it's also it was also surprisingly extremely affordable um so let me tell you guys how i did it how much i spent on everything and what all i did and saw while i was there so that way you can plan a trip to rome as well and have as great of a time as i did all right so let's go to rome First thing we're gonna start was how I bought the trip. Uh, so I actually used Groupon. There is a section on Groupon where you can go to um, vacations, packages, and stuff like that. And I went there and just kind of looked around and found one for Rome. It was for three nights, and it was the whole entire package. And I only paid six hundred and fifty dollars, which was really cheap considering that I was flying from the states to Rome and back, and that also included the hotel stay. And I ended up staying at a Holiday Inn in um, in Rome, and it was actually like a really nice one. Like I'd say, like a three, three and a half, four star um, one. So it was actually really nice. So considering all of that was just six fifty, I mean that took care of the, the the lodging and the travel to and from there. So yeah, that was really nice. Then the only other thing about transport was you know that um, to get around Rome, uh, we ended up taking a um, an Uber just because. I feel kind of weird using t um, cabs and whatnot in other countries. Um, it's not necessarily as bad as it used to be, but it seems like Rome only had like Uber Blacks, which are the more expensive ones. So yeah, it was kind of a lot of money to use the Ubers, but there are plenty of cabs, there are plenty of buses and things if that's the way you want to go about it. Um, we ended up I ended up deciding not to drive just because where we were in Rome, there were a lot of buses that could go to where we needed to go and we were also close enough to be able to walk to things as well. So um, there didn't seem like much of a reason to, you know, rent a car. So I would highly suggest um, booking travel in advance in terms of like either um, renting a car or um, like you can pre-book you know like Ubers and stuff like that you know that might be like something to do as well um, or think about like looking into taxi services and stuff like that there are plenty like outside of the airport but um, you know it, it just depends on I guess what you want to do and what's affordable to you. So what I ended up doing was um, there are buses that go around um, the city and they take you to all of the major spots and then they're hop on hop off tours. So I used one of them, I used I Love Rome bus tours. And um, they were really good, like they had Wi-Fi on the buses. It was really cold when I went to Rome and they actually had like heat and everything. And they're double-decker buses, so you can like sit in them and see, you know, a lot of stuff as well. So it was very nice. So the, that was actually like really affordable. That was, and um, it, was, it was very nice considering that it was going to go down all the spots. Now, the bus tours are run by different companies and they range and vary in price. And some of them go to more places than others. Some of them go to like seven spots, some go to nine some go to 13 um, it just depends some of them go to Vatican City um, so you know look for the one that you uh, that hits all the spots that you want to do it basically goes around the city of Rome and goes to all the landmarks and places like that some go to more than others and then it also depends on the day of the week that you're going so do make sure that you do some research on which tour bus you want to use and um, which stops are going to and what day you're doing it um, so the first stop that I went to, obviously, is the Colosseum. I mean, that's that's the dream. That's Rome. That's where everyone wants to go. And it was absolutely just beautiful. It was amazing. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I mean, it was freezing, and I still was there for hours. Like, we just walked around and saw every part of it. It was, like, the best thing in the world to see. 
um, and a hundred percent like just just so amazing to see and definitely something that you absolutely have to just something that you have to experience just just seeing it and then you can read the history about it there if you don't know it and it's it, it's amazing um, then after that, the, uh, we ended up going to the Vatican. Um, now, the, there was an extremely long line, so we kind of decided not to go inside. Um, I, I mean, I, I want to go inside, and eventually, you know, next time I go back to Rome, I'll probably go back inside. But the outside was really nice. You know, you, you walk around there. There's lots of vendors and stuff if you want to buy stuff. And I ended up getting some gelato, which is, like, so amazing, like, outside of it and everything. Now, there are, like, people that are... Um, outside um offering like you to to tour around and it's like 30 to 40 euros extra um and then they'll tour you around the vatican and that allows you to skip the line um so that is an option as well if you want to like go and skip the line because otherwise the line is like you know hours long so i would definitely advise doing that if if that's something that you want to you want to see so next up on our list is going to be the um altair della Pat patria sure I butchered the crap out of that but uh, it basically stands for the altar of the fatherland and um, it's just a completely gorgeous white marble monument and it's like amazing to go to um, it is free to go to what one of the neat things though is that there is a constant burning flame and um, there's two guards that stand on opposite sides of the flame. And apparently they're not allowed to look at each other. And they guard the tomb of the unknown soldier. He was um, killed during the First World War and became a symbol of the fallen unknown soldiers of Rome. So basically it was someone that had died during World War One, and they didn't, and he was an unknown soldier. They didn't know where he went. And so they, you know, have him in this tomb and he was sort of dedicated to all of the unknown soldiers that have fallen during, you know, the war, which is just incredibly sweet. Um, but I think it's kind of neat that the guards can't like look at each other. And when I was in Rome, it was like freezing. So like I was just freezing standing, taking this picture and like, I can only imagine how cold they must've been. Granted, they had on a lot of cloaks a lot of clothes. Uh, next up is going to be the Arch of Constantine, which is actually by the Colosseum. I'm not sure why in my blog I put it kind of like, you know, a couple away. But um, the Arch of Constantine is obviously, you know, extremely famous. It's beautiful. Um, it was constructed by the Roman Senate and, um, and it's actually like just, it's really big. Like it's, it's just a huge, huge arch. Um, so then from there, the next place is going to be Palatine Hill. Um, Palatine Hill was ac uh, actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Like, it's a huge, massive area, and there is just a ton of buildings and, and ruins and stuff there. And it was just so cool. I mean, you've got the Temple of Sibyl, the House of Tiberius, um, the Palace of Dom Domitian, uh, just, you know, several different places to see at Palatine Hill. That's something that you easily need to dedicate a couple of hours to if you want to see, like, everything. And it's so cool. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely, like, somewhere that y you have to be. And, you know, all of these places are free, excluding, except for, you know, the Colosseum, obviously, in the Vatican. Like, all of those other places, and, and all the pla most of all the places that are along the bus tour, in terms of, like, the actual landmarks to see in Rome, are all free. The last, you know, thing to talk about is obviously the food. I mean, I can't, I, I don't, I don't even know where to begin in talking about the food in Rome. I mean, there's just Italian it cuisine. It, I mean, it was amazing. Like, I had pizza at a place not too far from the Vatican, actually. Um, like, it was, like, right across the bridge. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll look it up and see if I can put it in the video. But, I mean, there's pizza everywhere. Um, I actually even, like, the Holiday Inn that I stayed at, I ate um, there a couple of times. Their food was amazing. Like, I know, you're, like, what are you doing eating at a hotel when you're visiting a foreign country? But they had, like, their, uh, their own food there, so they had, like, spaghetti and um, different types of spaghetti, not just spaghetti with marinara sauce, which is what Americans think spaghetti is, but actually that's just spaghetti noodles with marinara sauce. Um, but I mean, like they had a ton of good food. Like it, it was absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, and I even, I even got gelato. It was freezing. I mean, it was like at least 50 or 60 degrees, which to me is cold. Like that's freezing to me. I'm like basically anemic. So when you drop below like 73, I'm like, done freezing um but i got gelato it was it was so amazing like 
just absolutely amazing. And I, I mean, it going to Rome was such a unique and inspiring experience. It was one of the places where you can feel all of the history, you know, it, it's just, it, it's all there. It almost seems like it's intact. Um, just, just everything is left the way it is and either preserved or you, you know, repurposed, but still very much the same. It's very much this just giant city made out of all of these old buildings and structures and the architecture and everything. It's just, it, it's beautiful. The people are extremely friendly and nice. The food is amazing. It's definitely, definitely somewhere that I am so grateful and happy to have gone to. Rome is somewhere that I've always wanted to go for my entire life. I remember learning about it in history. I remember seeing the Colosseum and just being like, that is like, that's somewhere I'm gonna visit one day. Like, I want to see, I wanna touch that place. Like, the Colosseum was just like that place for me. And the fact that I was able to go was amazing. And the fact that it was incredibly, surprisingly affordable was, is truly amazing as well. You know, you always think about these places, the, these like far off places, especially in like America, where in the United States, where it's, it's so big, like, and we don't necessarily realize that. There aren't really, a lot of countries are so small. A lot of countries are the size of states here. And the United States is essentially almost like 50 countries that were put together and whatnot and made the United States. Versus you look at a map of like Europe, and it's like you've got all of these small little countries everywhere and it's so expensive to fly out of America but you know we think of all these places as being so far away and that we can never visit them but the truth of the matter is you can go anywhere and you can go and visit places and see places it's all about planning and timing and preparation and budgeting like that that's that's what you really have to do these places are definitely like somewhere to see like you know it's it's definitely an experience to travel to leave the country no matter where you live not just the united states but anywhere it's definitely an experience to leave the country to see another culture to see how other people live and to just have unique experiences and that's honestly what rome was for me it was just this unique incredible awe-inspiring you know just place to visit that I'm never going to forget. And I'm definitely going to have to go back again because you cannot do Rome in a weekend. Like, you can't. It's impossible. I don't even think you can do Rome in a week. Just everything that there is to see and do there, you need all the time in the world to go. You truly do. I think I'm going to leave this with a quote that Anatole Breuer said. Rome was a poem pressed into service as a city. And I don't think I've ever heard anything so amazingly and insanely accurate in my entire life. It's beautiful and perfectly encaptures Rome for everything that it is. Uh, so I hope this video helped. I hope this video helps you guys go and plan an amazing Rome experience of where to go, how to plan it, how to, you know, look for places to stay and everything. And if you guys have any questions or comments or anything, uh, don't forget to please let me know. I'd love to answer any questions you have or help you guys plan any trips that you need. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you guys around the world. Bye.